Hi, and welcome back to The Sandbar, Wisconsin's premier underground speakeasy. Now, I've been digging this bar cave out of sandstone bedrock for a couple years now, and I think we're on part seven right now. If you don't know what's going on, go back to part one or one of the earlier parts. Now, we were going to devote part seven to a special project at The Sandbar here, but as usual, I'm running behind. I'm not quite ready for that one yet. So part seven here is just gonna be more random projects, touching up stuff, finishing things, um, doing a bunch of all the small things that go into digging a tunnel in sandstone. So one project that we're still working on is behind the bar here, we've got this little closet area, and I've been using that to store all of the moldy, expired, dumpster-dived beer that just keeps magically appearing down here. I don't know where it comes from, it just seems like once people know you have a speakeasy underground, the beer just materializes. Anyway, I still want to make a door on this closet, so I've been working on these brick walls or door frames around it, and we're going to do a little bit more of that today. So I brought a bucket of Portland cement to mix with the sand and make mortar. Unfortunately, I'm out of water down here. But, hey, we've got all that dumpster beer, and a lot of that is basically water. Let's see if you can make cement with beer. So as we dig these tunnels down here at Sandland, we always want to improve and upgrade our safety equipment as we learn more and as we find new things that work better. For example, when I've been digging with the handheld jackhammers, I wear a respirator, a hard hat, ear protection, and face protection. This is a chainsaw face shield. Now, we found that when I'm digging with the angle grinder, there's a lot more fine dust kind of thrown up into the air, and the chainsaw face shield doesn't quite cut it. I've tried using some wraparound safety glasses, even combined with the uh, chainsaw shield, I still end up with a little more dust in my eyes, so I've gone out and purchased this thing, which is more of a full face shield, uses the same respirator cartridges, so I'm not inhaling that possibly carcinogenic silica dust, and I'm protecting my eyes and my face a lot more because this is a full sealed shield, full plastic face, um, we're gonna see how long this lasts. It might just get all scratched up so I can't see out of it anymore, but um, maybe we can combine this with the chainsaw shield and protect this thing a little bit longer, but really we don't care if we wreck our safety equipment because I'm trying to protect my eyes, my lungs, and my health. This, uh, this should do it. I feel even more like I'm in space, but uh, I think I'm a little better protected now. Now, a few people have asked in the comments, why don't we park the wagon below the digging face and dig above here so that all the sand just drops directly in the wagon? That way we don't have to do as much shoveling. That would look something like this. So this approach actually has a couple drawbacks. For one, this is really a confined space, so the wagon kind of gets in the way. It's hard to move around it, you trip on it a lot. Number two, a lot of the sand misses the wagon and tends to bury the wheels. So when I go to pull it out of here, if we've been digging this entire face and half of it had fallen the wagon, half of it had fallen around the wheels, it'd be a real pain to get it out of here. For the third thing, big chunks of sand can actually damage the wagon if they fall into it. These things are remarkably fragile and we've had a few failures with them. So we're actually trying to go easy on these wagons so they keep lasting long enough to get some good use out of them. Here's an example. I'm back out in the donut room. And this is the wagon that I actually assembled myself in an earlier video. And you can see right here where uh, the pivot kind of hits the wagon body, the bolt is actually stripped out. It's pulled out of the frame. And this is right where you get a lot of impact from things falling into the wagon. This is also where you have a lot of force from pulling the wagon, from dumping the wagon. 
So kind of this one bolt here gets a lot of the forces acting on this wagon and it has started to fail. So currently this one is out for repairs and we are down to only five of these wagons. Uh, I'm also fogging up here quite a bit. We've got some humidity issues today, so um, I'm going to do something else. So we've had like six or seven installments of this underground speakeasy digging project and honestly it, it gets a little tedious after a while. It, I can only show so much digging and so much shoveling and so much sand hauling before all the videos start to look the same. So if anyone has any suggestions for what they'd like to see, what parts of this project am I omitting, uh, what parts am I not thinking about, uh, throw a comment down below. Let me know if there's something you'd like to know about digging an underground tunnel, digging through sandstone, building a bar underground, or any other questions along those lines. I will try to keep focusing on some unique little aspects of the tunnel project and detail work and artistic stuff and interesting things that we do along the way, but a lot of this project is honestly just smashing out sandstone with the hammer drill and shoveling it into wagons and hauling it out. Realistically, with a project like this, it's just a lot of monotonous, brute force, heavy labor. We've taken a break from digging inside the tunnels to work on our new third added at the surface. So today we also have a new development. Eric, the owner of Sandland, has purchased a new tractor, sort of. The old tractor was on kind of a uh, try it before you buy it program, and the fellow that provided that has found a newer one that supposedly is going to work even better. Also, thanks to some generous donations, including from some viewers on the channel here, thank you, Eric has met his fundraising goal to help purchase this tractor. Sandland can always use donations or volunteers or people uh, willing to help out dig holes or maintain old tractors or all kinds of other silly projects out here. So we've got our little uh, trestle or loading platform that's coming out from where the future tunnel entrance will be. There's the prior hall tunnel entrance up there. So the idea today is to get a tunnel entrance started here, start going back into the hill, haul the sand out and dump it, and hopefully we're going to have that new tractor available here to take the sand immediately up to the top of the hill. We'll set up some time-lapse video and we'll see what this looks like. All right, well, we've dug pretty much all day. We've made at least two loads for the tractor to take up the hill, and we've gotten about a foot of tunnel into the hillside, so that's uh, actually pretty good progress for the day. The sandstone is a little bit harder, especially the darker layers. That uh, lighter colored layer up above is a lot easier to dig through. Maybe we'll hit more of that as we go into the hill here. So the plan is to go in straight about 10 feet, and then we're gonna actually curve to the right we're going to go back under the hillside there, and we're going to connect up to some of the existing tunnels. And again, all of that comes in up at the upper adit there, and then the original adit that's kind of around the corner there. All right, we're going to wrap this video up here. Uh, I think we've made enough progress for today, and we've done enough random videos for this segment. So stay tuned for the next installment of Sandland Tunneling. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.